joining me. If you don't know Fiona, um, you may know Def FX from <laughs> the 90s. Um, and gosh, you've been on like, you've been on TV, radio, and you have all these other amazing things that if we've seen you on TV and radio, we may not have known that you're a pilot and humanitarian aid worker, a yoga instructor. You've got a world record for skydiving <laughs> as well. <laughs> I love all of this. Um, a fire dancer, a sailor, and of course, uh, what we're talking about today is um, you're also a witch, a practicing witch, and um, an elder of witchcraft was in um, in some of the info I had, and I just loved that. I was like, oh, what? An elder? Wow. But yeah, you, you really have been practicing, um, and you have all that, you've collected all that different knowledge and, and wisdom, so, and you've written 11, is it 11 books? Yeah. And you've, I've lost count. I think yeah. the last one's 11, yeah. 11 books and today we're, we're going to be talking about The Art of Witch and um, which is your latest book. It's out now. It's come out this month. There right it is. There. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful. Thank you. And it's actually, it's got a velvet cover. Oh, really does it? Cover. Oh. It covers velvet. Really oh, young. that's awesome. Yeah. They I love producing it. Love that. And you've got your debut Oracle cards as well. And they're out in July. And yes. um, you've got the spoken word tour, which if anyone wants some cards, they can they can get a sneaky preview and get them early. Um, yeah, guess, we've got them at the actual yeah. events. They're going to be um, at each stand. I'm very lucky my publishers are coming along. We're sort of doing like a road trip, you know, getting in the combi and loading it up with books, cards, you know, all this good stuff. And um, so people, yeah, if they want to come, they can also um, pick up a deck of cards and the book. And, um, and of course, I'll, I'm really looking forward to getting up close with everyone and magical in the sense of um, hanging out after, like there's the event, but also meeting everyone after. The events are more intimate. The last time I did a, like, one Enchanted Evening tour back, it was about 10 years ago. There were, the venues were really big. It was like seven, 800 people. And incredibly, they all sold out. It was, it was insane. And, um, but this time we've gone for smaller venues, a more intimate kind of experience. So really for me, coming back to Australia, you know, you mentioned I, I work as a, a commercial pilot, do a lot of stuff now living over in the Caribbean. And I'm literally on the other side of the world. But, so coming all the way over to Australia to do this, talking my boss into giving me a month off work, uh, to, go, to come and do this. So I really wanted to just get close to people that have been on this journey with me for a long time, whether it's with my books on witchcraft, whether it's with Deaf Effects, because we're also doing a farewell tour this month. This is essentially yeah, my farewell visit. Yeah, so I, I want to like really, you know, I'll hang out for an hour or two hours, whatever it takes to meet everyone after the shows, after the events, and um, mm -hmm. sign things, do photos, you know, sign babies, butts, you know, whatever. <laughs> You know, you see those videos of like, like, yes, yeah, like yeah. people signing that baby's forehead, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Um, yeah, and so, and that's really, I love that because um, it really shows me you're living like that that connection and I'm sure we'll, we'll talk about it soon, but magical living is about living, to, for me, in a in a connected way. It's, and it's yeah, not just it's about community. It's yes. not a, that's a big difference now, Kat, you know, I mean, you you raise a really good point there in that uh, noticing that because what I've learned, one of the biggest things I've learned, and you mentioned that I'm an elder, it's like, yeah, decades. It's been over three decades, two decades since I wrote my first book. The change I've seen in the magical community and people living with a, with a sense of wanting to be mindful, wanting to experience wellness in their lives, it's a community effort now. It's not just about the individual. Uh, and, I, you know, relating this back to witchcraft, you know, it was a, there were so many solitary witches when I started out. Um, even, even though there's a bit of information out there, but I think what's, what's happened with the, um, the communication tool that the internet can be, um, whether you wield that for better or for worse, in the sense of wielding it for the better, it unites us all in a sense of um, global unity. And, and there is, no matter what you focus your attention on, um, well, actually, it does matter a lot what you focus your attention on, I choose to focus my attention on what's working and what's good in the world and what celebrates the human presence on the planet. And, um, and that community can be a global community and it is. Um, 
of mindful people focused on wellness, um, wanting to be not older but better at living, becoming that, and sharing that together. And so community is a huge part of it. And that's one of the biggest changes I've seen in the last, you know, 20 years of coming out of the broom closet as a witch um, is that we have gone from being this kind of separate judgmental group to being this, this community that celebrates our unity in our diversity and, um, and focused a lot more on actually practicing what we preach, which is treading on the earth lightly, honoring yeah. nature and really doing it, you know, living by those principles, whether it's eating organically, consuming less, you know, uh, treading lightly on the earth, um, really taking conscious steps towards that and, and into that right now in the present moment, and then sharing that journey with others. So, um, so we don't have to feel so uh, locked away and isolated in our, you know, particularly in witchcraft, I think it, it originally maybe attracted people who had a bit of a knee-jerk reaction to mainstream religions. But, you know, there's so many witches now. There's so many people who maybe don't call themselves a witch, but say that they want to live a magical life. And mm -hmm. they do things like rituals of gratitude. And I watch them doing it. And they're witches. I mean, that's what we do. Yeah. It's like that, that, that's a spell kind of sort of right there. Mm, it um, is. Even when I was on Channel 10 yesterday and, uh, and Angela Bishop was saying some stuff about rituals of gratitude. And I was like, well, that's kind of what spell casting is. Yeah. If you... You know, if you emphasize the opportunity to, um, when you do a ritual or a spell, um, if to, to put them in a similar category, you're actually uh, using elements of the natural world, tools of consciousness to manifest transformation. And that's really what living a magical life is. Yeah. yeah. I love that. I love that. And um, Side note, I really, I saw um, a bit of the Studio 10 interview and can I just say thank you for such a diplomatic answer and a true answer on good witch and bad witch because I cringe when someone says white witch. No. And, and it's for people to understand and kind of step, step aside from the fear. Um, and as you say, it's good people and bad people and what you're just saying, it's, it is about it's consciousness. Individuals, whatever spiritual path they walk, may make, make poor and smart choices or might make, uh, you know, good and bad choices if you want to attribute moral behaviour according to those, those titles, good and bad. Um, I get asked that question so much less now. <laughs> I mean, seriously, 20 years on, yeah. it's so different now out there. Um, yeah. There is... I mean, it's, it's actually really amazing and, and wonderful that, um, you know, there's still individuals that maybe through misinformation, lack of education might have a preconceived notion of what a modern witch is. Um, but there is an enormous shift towards uh, recognising and honouring other people's choices. Mm. And even if we might say on a, you know, I can't get political, I don't know enough about it, but there might be certain things presented as... Uh, you know, and people might make a blanket assessment that, oh, there's, there's um, intolerance, there's racism, or there's, um, you know, uh, vilification, you know. But, but when I speak to individuals outside of the media's portrayal of what's happening in our, in our human race around the world right now, the individuals are not like that. There are amazing, very bright, you know, sparks of light in our, um, just in people in general. And that's, you might go into an environment like a mainstream media outlet and potentially be on the front line of misinformation, judgment and fear. And yet every single individual there is, is, is willfully embracing concepts of wanting to be happy, wanting to celebrate life, not wanting to buy into the myth that's being paraded out there, that the human species is doomed and the planet's going down the toilet. There are so many amazing, beautiful people out there making incredible inspired choices. And that's, you know, in Art of Witch in the new book, you know, it's a manifesto, not only about being a modern witch and what I've learned in the last 30 years of being out there and, and deliberately, in, you know, even longer than 30 years actually practicing it, you know, but talking about it for over 20, 30 years, it's like, well, 20 years, it's yeah. like, um, there, it's not just people like who, are, who align themselves with witchcraft that are wanting to um, live fulfilled, happy lives. So the book, the book talks about ways of approaching that and ways of embracing that. 
Um, yeah, understanding that the difference you make in your own life is inevitably going to be shared with others. And, you know, it's something like I had a bit of a crisis when I got here, Kat. I mean, I, I come out from the Caribbean, you know, I'm working full time, flying every day. And, you know, my boss is letting me come out and do this, do this tour, this farewell tour. And I get here and I'm like, oh, my God, I've got to do a farewell tour. I've got to go on stage and talk about all this stuff. I've gone and booked it all in. Um, the band's doing a farewell tour. Uh, booked all that in. All this was meant to happen two years ago in 2017, but I um, I got nailed, my island I live on got nailed by two catastrophic hurricanes, so I wasn't going anywhere. And I was a humanitarian aid outreach person going to Haiti and other islands to help. And all of a sudden I became the recipient of international aid, having gone through these two, like everything destroyed. And it was just catastrophic. Like. So, you know, here I am now, two years later, able to be here and fulfill on the promise I made, which was to come out and connect. Um, but consequently, I didn't expect I was gonna have a full-time job and be trying to juggle all that and get out here. So I guess my point is the crisis I had was um, how, how do I do this? I mean, I was really jet lagged. It was the second morning I woke up in Australia. I'd gone straight on channel seven when I got here. Oh, wow. You know, and just blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And this morning I wake up. And I'm losing it and I'm in tears. And I realized what was going on in my head of how the hell am I gonna pull this off? Was I was making it too much about me. I had isolated, come into a state of ego and gone, oh, I, 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 I have to do this, I have to be this, I, 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 I. And it was like, wait a minute, you're not, it's not about you. This visit isn't about you, it's about everyone else. And if people find you inspiring and you're in this incredibly pri privileged position to share your journey with others that it might be useful and inspiring to them. You know, get out of your own way, Fiona, and just bloody make it not about you. And that's all the have those key moments. <laughs> end in this book is don't yeah. make it about you. Don't make your life about what you're receiving. Make it about what you're giving. And, yeah. and the universe just conspires in your favour. The second I remembered that this isn't about me, it was like whew, all the fear went away. The tears stopped. I felt imbued with a sense of lightness, a sense of purpose. I felt fulfilled and I felt ready. And, you know, it's a lot of hard work. You've got to show up to life and you've got to be prepared to do the work. Um, but if you can show up and be as honest and authentic with yourself and then not make it about you as you can, as you can possibly make it, then um, everything kind of works out. And that's the biggest secret I've learned in, um, in The Art of Witch is that it's a secret to all the spells working 100% of the time is not to make them about you and, and what you think you need, but to make it about how you can be a better version of yourself. In fact, maybe even the best version of yourself right here, right now, in order to be more useful in the world. And then the universe conspires in your favour and you end up having this magical life that's like more amazing than you could have ever conjured or micromanaged with your limited view of the world. You know? yeah. That's how it works. That really is yeah. the art of which. And, and, you know, again, shameless plug, that's what I that's what I talk about in this book and I yeah. think that's what makes it relevant. And one thing I love um when you it, with the book um you talk about it being you know um for the structuralists and uh the evolutionaries and it's beyond the bells and whistles and it's about trusting the magic inside of you and you know I love this because I am so um aligned with the you know magic is all around us and it's within us and there are, you don't need the bells and whistles to, to in, you know, whatever you want to say, invite, ignite, create that magic. So I'd love to hear um, some of your everyday magic practices, which I guess you've, you've um, told us a little bit about, about checking in within yourself and just being, you know, getting a bit of perspective and, yeah. and getting that, that connection. And also um, those mo moments... <clears throat> sorry those moments when you're in flow and in alignment and that you know all these magical possibilities show up and I know a lot of people have trouble trusting that within themselves and would you say a lot of that has to do with your daily practices and my, my number one daily practice is yep. um to be uh how would I say this consistent I, I had a nice, uh, consistent with my efforts, I had a nice chat with um, a girl that's been helping me, like driving me around a bit to do some interviews and she's awesome and amazing. 
And she said, oh, yeah, I get that mindful, um, that mindful uh, positive thought thing. Yeah, I tried for a couple of months. Yeah. And now, nah, but, you know, life's really, really sucks. Men are horrible and, you know, I'm kind of miserable. And I thought, how interesting. She gave it a couple of months, you know. Of, you know, I've given it decades, <laughs> you know, yeah. and it's a work in progress. It's like when we, you know, if you give up being a perfectionist, suddenly life's perfect. The biggest tip I have is to be consistent with your efforts. And that means if you are thinking mindful and you've maybe done a little morning ritual where you, and you've dedicated this time to your personal practice, and this is what I do, because I'm as, as uh, able as anyone else to get distracted and get, get sort of like caught up in a billion things, even you and I trying to sit down to the morning cat, like bloody hell. <laughs> but what I did do was when I went away off camera and ate my breakfast, I went and sat where I could see the ocean just out here um, where I'm very lucky to be staying with my golf. I've just got a view of the harbour and I can see the ocean. And I took a breath and allowed my body to settle. I prayed and thanked my vegan breakfast for its sacrifice in the plants and the fruits that were involved in making it. And I thanked them for their energy. And I, I, I prayed in my own way that I would become a better and more useful presence in the world because of their sacrifices, they nourished me. I took that moment to pray. I took that moment to look at the water while I ate my food. I've got a painful back because we had crazy band practice last night, rocked out. I mean, a lot of, I was, I was in a lot of pain, but I also said a prayer of love to myself and my back. And I said, I trust you and I love you. And I know we can get better together and everything will be good today. And, you know, if you just take those few moments to take yourself seriously enough that you're worth it, that, in fact, the number one person who has to be the biggest love of your life has to be you. Yeah. If you can honour yourself with that and really, even if a flicker of doubt comes in and even if you think, oh, well, my son said this or my girlfriend said this or my husband said this, if you just come back to right here and right now is just me and the universe and give yourself that gift that is magic right there working very simple doesn't require a lot of fancy props it requires a little bit of a ritual which was i was nourishing my body i was telling my body i love it and i trust it i was thanking the food for its sacrifice to allow me to be nourished that's witchcraft right there. That's, yeah. that's what modern witchcraft is. And yes, you can go and light a bunch of candles, which is fabulous. And you can do ritual and you can use an athame and you can have a, an altar and you can do all this fabulous creative stuff. Mm. But you can also, just like you did then, take a sip of tea, take a moment to feel its warmth through, move through your body, feel that sense of, of that inner hug, that inner love, mm. and, and then allow yourself to step out in the world and do the best you can. And that means... You know, the one thing I've got very good at is not giving up because I have failed more than I've ever succeeded. I have screwed up more than I've ever got it right. But I'm so grateful for the lessons. And I also know that when those lessons came, I used to beat myself up and say I'd failed and I was, you know, and I, I descended into a deep pit of alcoholism about seven years ago based on someone who I loved leaving me. Drama, drama, and my life fell apart. Uh, so what did I do? I had a choice to drink myself to death. I tried that and almost did. But then I stopped and I remembered that I'm a witch. <laughs> and, and you know what? It's like if there's any darkness on my spiritual path, if there is a, like a, you know, a decay and death and, and, and darkness that needs to come, then I decided to find in that darkest moment that I could light a light and I could shine it and I could get through. And, that, and that's where as a witch I pulled myself out of that and I got sober and I in a program, but I got sober on my own in, with the program, with my community in the program and continued on my magical way. And, you know, I think that's just my story. We all have our stories and none of them are better or worse or more interesting, less interesting. They're all relevant to us as, we, as much as we allow them to be. So yeah. um, I really hope that, you know, in the book, it's it's kind of these these steps that I've learned. Um, there's even like a witch life checklist to make it easy. You know, these are all <laughs> That's the awesome. The number one most controversial thing, my mm. number one like tip on witch life, living you know having these daily rituals, these life rituals, these these yeah. magical practices. And I say, give away most of your possessions. And basically, every book review Ooh. I've got has been amazing. <laughs> Everyone's going, oh my god, we love the book, but you know what? Can't agree with everything. Nah. Not giving away all my possessions. But the trick, 
then that's good. I like people who think for themselves. That's what this, hopefully this book encourages people to do and what my life at this point allows people to consider possible is you can forge your own journey and trust it. Um, but giving away your possessions, it's more like minim, minimising the distractions in life. Yeah. So another thing I've given up, um, you know, not, even, not just drugs and alcohol of a, of a toxic nature going into my body, but also um, toxic media. I don't watch the news. I don't yeah. read magazines. I don't... I don't even stand at a newsstand and look at the covers. If I walk into a bank and they're playing where I live in America, CNN, on the bank, I cover my eyes. Like, I just yes. refuse to allow toxic shit into my mm. space, whether that's yes. stuff I'm putting into my body or stuff around me. Conversations. You know, one of the things about witchcraft is that, you know, we, we kind of, especially when I came out of the broom closet, I was talking about it too, you know, change the world around you by doing these spells and rituals. Um, I've realised that, it's not my job to change the world. It's my job to change my perception of the world. And sometimes the most powerful act of magic is just to step away and let the enemy blunder by. So when it comes to negative conversations, um, negative attitudes about um, what people can expect of life, like AKA, we're destined to be miserable, grow old, get sick, die expensively after being euthanized on lethal drugs for the last three decades of our lives. It's like, fuck that, I'm not gonna do it, you know? I'm not yeah. gonna do that. And so I, 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 I've learned, that's what I mean by when you give away most of your possessions, it's the things that you think are innately in you and a part of you. But then you actually, if you step back and look at them, it's just all up stuff and, yeah. and conditioning. And, you know, you have the right to, to erase these things and let them go. And if there's anything in me that, you know, sometimes I say I'm an anarchist because I just don't, I, I will not buy into the system I don't, I, I just, you know, till the day I die, I will keep making choices based on my perception in the moment and not what everyone's telling me. Um, because as much as I talked earlier about there being a lot of really inspired, amazing, um, mindful people out there wanting to, to make a positive difference in their own lives and others, there's still this collective way it's kind of fed to us from the system that the, or, the visual and oral pollution of advertising, and it's just in us yeah. all the time. Even bloody social media, which started out as a tool to, you know, kind of serve the community, has become a tool to manipulate the community. So, you know, we've just got to have our wits about us and, and be really, and going back to what we said earlier, the most magical thing I've learned to do is be consistent. If yeah. I screw up, if I get distracted, I get back in, you know. So if someone's having, starts a day off great, some heavy stuff happens, they don't really have their magical mojo on and they're like, ah, oh, at the end of the day feeling like crap again, that's okay. Have a cup of herbal tea, give yourself a break, start again the next day. And yeah. just and, and over time, all these tiny steps add up. And um and that consistent self-love thing, you know? Yeah. I'm hearing that consistent self-love, like not beating yourself up and you know, having that my body's not against me. Actually, I love my body and I'm with my body. It's you know? Yeah, our and, bodies are designed to be and the world and designed to work and not to not to be destroyed. They've become like a marketing tool and a, and something that yes. we are um, we're encouraged to think we're even encouraged to think that pregnancy is an illness. You know, we have to go to the hospital for it. It's, I mean, you know, fair enough. It's like if there are definitely um, positives to living in a in a in a, the, the modern age of healthcare and, and medicine. And actually, my dearest girlfriend Lydia just got an OAM, an Order of Australia medal, for her services to nursing. I mean, you know, I mean, the, the, the healthcare profession is a no, and the mainstream one is a noble and brilliant thing. However, I don't go to the doctor all the time. I remember I, I have to go to the doctor um, for a, uh, like for a, a medical that's required for my job as a commercial pilot. I have to have certain minimum standards of health, eyesight, blood pressure, blah, 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 to be allowed to operate an aircraft as a, as the sole pilot in command with a bunch of lives like we call them souls i report how many souls i have in the plane when i'm calling atc and going wow. to another airspace or whatever you know i've got to tell them how many souls are on board huge mm -hmm. responsibility so that's the last one i went to the doctors which was this year in february to get my annual medical done so i can keep my job and um the doctor said oh oh just noticed you're um yeah you're, oh, you're turning 53 oh you don't look like you're turning 53 okay well uh, all right yeah but it's okay yeah yeah well, who, who do you uh, schedule? How do you schedule your preventative colonoscopies and uh, your preventative medicine? And I was like, I don't. And he went, What do you mean? Like, well, I guess you're not a candidate for breast cancer anymore because you're probably in menopause, aren't you? I said, 
don't know. I, I had a period last year and then it stopped and I've had it again recently. <laughs> don't know. And I love yeah. not having periods. I feel great, you know, because again, yeah. menopause is marketed to women that, oh, you've reached your use by date. Oh, you know, you, yes. you're no longer attractive. You no longer can have orgasms that are fulfilling. Oh, you know, you and you got to start taking expensive hormones, buying into the system. I'm like, fuck yeah. that. I'm not going to do it. So um, consequently, because I live liberated from that preconceived notion that I have to do what everyone else is telling me to do, my yeah. body's feeling great. Yeah. I, I mean, the doctor said I've got blood pressure better than a 10-year-old. I've had the best sex of my life in the last four months with a gorgeous guy I met. Um, and I'm supposedly in menopause, whatever. It's I like, know. bring it on. I'm so glad not to have periods anymore. My point in this long rant is that you have choices to make decisions based Absolutely. on you and your well-being. Now, if you, I think about all this of like, not because I want to be in this out there being fabulous. I just want to be useful in the world. I shift my thinking. I don't know it's all about me. That way I can look in the mirror every day and smile. I mean, when I was the proverbial beautiful young 20 something in linear years, which is paraded as our most marketable and valuable time as women in, in yeah. our culture. Yeah. Um, I was miserable. I used to punch myself in the face and give myself a black eye. I did that. I did that. I talk about it in my autobiography. I self mutilated. You know, I mean, my gosh, you know, and I, was, yeah. I look like, oh my gosh, I was a beautiful young woman. Bloody yeah. hell. And I beat myself up and cut and just did things to myself that were awful. So, you yeah. know, we all have our journeys. My point is, um, yeah. you don't have to be what everyone's telling you to be. Make your own, except what I tell you to be. <laughs> <laughs> Which is being in alignment with yourself, right? True to yourself and, you know, and make your own choices. So, it's... well, that's right. And don't, and don't treat your body like it's the enemy. And, oh. and you know, I mean, oh. I've been through all sorts of physical experiences. I've been what could be called really overweight. I was a sick alcoholic on the brink of death taking handfuls of drugs the doctors had given me for stress and drinking on top of it because my husband had left me and poor me, you know, and off I go. And that was just seven years ago. So, yeah. you know, and it's like... And we are sold know, that. We are believe. sold that, like, oh, no. You, ha you yeah. know, we, we are sold that. And we are sold that, oh, no, like, this is the end of the world. This is the end of your life. Or, you know, as you spoke about birth, if you don't have a birth, you know, if you have a home birth, oh my gosh, you're, you know, it's dangerous. And it's like, well, actually a couple of generations ago, it didn't really matter if yeah. women had babies at home, if women's, you know, partners, you know, left or stayed or they, the women left, or it was just, it was more community and um, mm -hmm. more trusting what works for everybody. And yeah. I'm, I'm conscious of time. Oh so, my gosh, yes, time. Oh yes. My gosh. I Before we go, <laughs> um, if you want to talk about um, your, I love for your tour, you've, you've said don't get older, get better at living. And we have spoken a lot about this um, already. Yeah. Um, yeah, but if there's anything you would like to add before we go, and then I'll um, talk about the tour dates before, before. Okay, great. Well, what I'd love to do, I mean, I think we've definitely capped on the doctor. Oh, yes. You don't have to get older, you can get better at living. But what I was thinking is, why don't we pull a card for you today? Oh, yes, please. You know, I've, I've forgotten. Today. Thank you for reminding me. Yeah. And well, the thing about the deck I want to share with the Mantra Review Oracle deck is that um, where I, I mean, I've been reading Tarot, the classic, you know. Um, I, I've used Celtic Tarot deck, the same deck for like 30 years. And when I had the opportunity to do a debut Oracle card deck with my, um, with my publisher and feel very blessed they gave me this opportunity, I thought, what can I, what, what do I wish existed as I do all these readings? And, um, and I, I never read the cards for myself because I don't, I can't distance myself from, from mm -hmm. what I want, think I want to see in the moment, yeah. blah, 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 blah. As much as I'm mindful and conscious of allowing the world to show me what I need and keep my ego out of the way, at the same time, you get caught up in it. So I was like, what do I need? So I, I particularly designed these cards to be the card the reader can read for themselves. Mm -hmm. And there's, um, there's a little booklet that comes with it. There's specific um, types of draws you can do. You can do one card, two cards, three, and nine. Specific spreads, super easy. Um, but what I found really beautiful, the theme of this deck is unlock your hidden truth. So maybe trust that the guidance coming to you and that these beautiful keys on the back of the cards that Jess in production at Rockpool did, and they're just stunning. Um, but what, what this means is that you can, if you're just feeling you can't see the wood for the trees, you can pull the magic of your oracle and get some guidance. The other thing is there's a ritual, 
a witch's ritual, magic ritual. It's, you don't have to be a witch, but each card has a ritual associated with it. So that if you want to pull one card, get some guidance and then perform the ritual, it allows you to anchor that guidance and, and work through the, the either, you know, magnify the, the reasons to be feeling fabulous or navigate through the obstacles at that time, whatever it is, you know. So the, the, artist, the girl who drew this is an amazing, um, amazing artist. Uh, Marcella Bolivar is the artist and she let me uh, go into her body of work and choose 36 images. She's based in Colombia. Andre from Rockpool Publishing found her and put me in touch with her and, um, and I was able, she allowed me to go through and choose 36 images from her about body of work to use wow. for the deck. And then I could channel the cards through that. So really, really love these. I mean, I love both these things. I feel so lucky because this will be the last, I'm not planning to write anymore um, or produce any more of these things. I, I got to get back to flying airplanes. I kind of didn't expect I'd have the opportunity to do this again in my, came, all came around a few years ago. So here we go with a beautiful velour covered book. Here we go with beautiful tactile cards. I feel very blessed. So let's um, let's pull a card for you. If you would allow me to pull one for you. Yeah, absolutely. You tell me when to stop and I'm going to take the top oh. card. Okay. Okay, stop. <laughs> okay, top card. Ooh, Lavaria, let love grow. So mm. Lavaria, this card, if you can see it, can I get it in close? Does that work? Is that angled right? Yeah, I can see, yeah. Yeah. So Lavari is an interesting one because the picture on the card is of a man hugging a woman and her head buried in, in his chest and his head is actually a skull inside a fishbowl, which means it, it, the symbol, symbolism means putting people we love on a pedestal doesn't allow them to grow. It places them in a very fixed and static position. And... Um, you know, sometimes, especially casting love spells, you think, oh, you know, I want to manifest this love or make it grow or whatever. And actually by having a really fixed idea about it and putting the lover or the loved one on a pedestal um, traps them in a finite state of what's possible. So the message for you today is to allow love to grow, not only in your significant other partner or if you don't have one in the idea of what one is, is to let go of all those, um, you know, ideas about what it should be and what it should look like and allow yourself to be surprised. So when I actually read the, uh, the card itself, and I go to, to card number 14, here we go. And I read Lavaria. I, I don't know, do you want this to be outed on, on national? Yeah, national no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah. Yeah. All right, Kat, Lav Lavaria appears when a healthy expression of love is turned into an obsession with love, or more specifically, an idea that it is not love. So we're outing you on uh, as far as your relationships go because this is specifically pertaining to someone you love. <laughs> the skeletons of your expectations are limiting your experience of love. Mm -hmm. Release your attachment to what was and let a new concept of love evolve in your heart and mind. The embrace appears tender between the lovers, but they are bound by, by vines that trap. It's like all wrapped around the card of these vines around the lovers. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, and it's trapped them in a fixed expression that cannot grow. It's time to remember that your lover is only human as evidenced by the skull, which is human. Your lover is not a god or goddess, so do not worship them. Enjoy them. Love is beautiful in all its expressions, but the extremes of passion and infatuation are not sustainable. It's time to find balance in love. And then it goes on to, like, whether that's in an intimate relationship, family members, you can think about... Not, it's not only the people we're having sex with or we want to have sex with and we're kissing. It's the people we're intimate with on every level, you know? That's what Lavaria means. And then the Vines of Love um, spell is a lovely one because it actually involves, if you want to, placing an object that represents love to you amongst a growing plant and allow it, but let the plant grow around it and grow the oh, love. Cool. Yeah, so it's, um, and, and I like vine that. are really great for that, like an ivy or any kind of vine that it just mm -hmm. keeps growing. Because, you know, even if someone's in a cage, if there's a vine planted inside the cage, the vine will always grow out of the cage mm -hmm. and find freedom. Nature yeah. always finds its way. So it's about letting your, uh, the natural aspect of, of the inevitable growth of love grow in your life. So yeah. I hope that's useful. That's just... Um, yeah, little, no, definitely. That's been outed on Facebook or whatever. This <laughs> <is gonna happen. laughs> Do you relate no, to any of that? Definitely a, a, Do you um, relate to it? A shift, yeah, yeah. So... We're about to have our, our third um, our third baby this later this year. And, um, yeah, so 
it, and the dynamic, there's definitely a shift in the dynamic and, you know, there are, there are flashes of, you know, different things. I'm like, oh, that's awesome. And I'm like, oh, that's, but I noticed that piece going, oh, that's a bit out of character. Um, not in a negative way, mm. um, but at the same time, I'm like, oh yeah, right. Thanks. I, I need the reminder of like, well, you know, we're shifting. Just, just let that character go, yes. you know? Yeah. yeah. Let it grow into the next expression because incredibly, you know, we often, especially with matters of love and partnership and family, we have these kind of memories that could be idyllic. Like people go, oh, the first three years or all oh, the first three months. And, and we tend to look to the past in order to establish an opinion about the present. But what this card means with Lavaria, it means anchor your love in the present moment and let it grow because there will be more memories that you will look back on. You need to sort of allow more of those to come in and not get into this yeah. fixed kind of way of playing out a relationship, you know. Yes. Um, and you can't predict the way the line's going to grow. Every, every positive card, I mean, every moment of light has its, has its darkness, has its yeah. time of, um, you know, time of reckoning, you know. It, it, it's so, it's also a, it's, it's just an opportunity for you to really remember that also when we plant a seed, it goes deep into the dark earth in order to grow. So sometimes we need those sort of stepping back, allowing things to kind of be rebirthed, to come into the light again. And that's how really healthy, uh, sustainable relationships, just like in nature, like, you know, when we plant an organic crop, we rest the soil every other season. You know, sometimes we'll just let things settle and allow them to be born again into a new expression and not, not push for what you think you know and expect. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. The, the, and the cyclical nature of growth really mm. resonates with me. So, yeah. yeah. Yay. Well, thank you Yay. for reading for you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. It's been an honour to chat. I could, I could chat more, but, you know, we're, know, we're probably out working of time. on Newtonian time today. So. <laughs> um, so if you want to catch Fiona... Um, with her spoken word, The Art of Witch, and you can get the book and the cards there. The, the book's out now um, through Rockpool Publishing, and the cards, you have to wait till July to until you the, next go to the spoken my, word. Yeah. yeah. And also FionaHorn.com, yes. my website. It's really easy oh, yes. to go to FionaHorn.com. Um, I don't know if you can throw that up on the screen or I'll just... Yeah, I will yeah. Share it all with the, yeah. with the post. FionaHorn.com has all the details of the dates and venues um, of the spoken word that's happening along the east coast of Australia. It is the last time I'm planning to do this. Yeah. So I really hope everyone will come out. There's going to be like a chat like this, Q&A, where people can ask me questions. And then we're all going to do a transformative ritual together at the end. Oh, wow. um, and then I'll hang around for as long as it takes to sign books and meet people after. Um, yeah. Also, Death Affects My Band is touring as well at the same yeah. month. So all that information is on um, on FionaHorn.com, all the links to the socials, tickets, yeah. and also information about it because everything's there. So really invite people to come and check that out. And then I really hope to see everyone at something, like whether it's a spoken word or a Death Affects gig, it'll be amazing. Yes. So tomorrow and anyone who's, you know, in, in Sydney, <laughs> where, where I'm at the moment, um, you're in Newtown tomorrow um yes, at the Vanguard. The Vanguard. and yeah. i gotta say there's a special offer they just announced it oh. today for the last 24 hours it's a two for one deal so oh, wow. if you um, buy a ticket you can bring a friend for free so that's just oh, running wow. now they just the venue just launched that which is really exciting so um yeah buy a ticket get one for free so check it out that um awesome. just just uh, i think i guess it's mosh ticks but the link i think it's mosh ticks yeah. yeah yeah i can share that link as well and then you're heading up to Maitland and Queensland and down to Victoria and then the Blue Mountains. So yeah. Um, yeah. Everyone has a chance on the everyone on the East Coast has a chance to Yeah, to, I'm sorry uh, I couldn't get out to the West Coast and some some people have written but at the end of the day my boss gave me a month off work unpaid. Um I've fronted all this myself. So appreciate the love and support. There's no big promoter or big company behind this. It's just me and you, you know. Yeah. So please come out and um I would have got to Perth and every and Darwin and Tasmania and South Australia with the with my personal trip. Def FX is able to go to South Australia. A promoter oh, did, yeah, promoter did step in there and said, "Hey, I really want you guys in Adelaide," and he's actually fronting the dollars for that. Because as much as we live a magical life, honestly, Kat, I own nothing except my freedom and my happiness. Yeah. Um, so really, it's just about being here yeah. with everyone. And thank you for the support. And please come to the East Coast shows. It'd be really, really great to connect with everyone. Yeah. And thank you so much for sharing uh, so much of your wisdom and experience. 
and and connecting with the community as well. So, yep, FionaHorn.com if anyone wants to check Fiona out.